All right, I got a few more things done, so I'll walk you around here and show you where I'm at. Got the garage doors on, I got the end metal on. Uh, show you guys how I'm making this jig to uh, cut the angle on the end wall metal. Then you guys, you just gotta measure the one length either side of it and then put it in the jig and cut it. Show you how I'm doing that. And then one thing, uh, there's a few other things I didn't uh, show you guys along the way. It's just some small details and I'll show you that. One thing I didn't show whenever I was putting it together is uh, if you watch the framing video, I just put one nail in on the girders when I was hanging them and then I came back and put the rest of them in. I just want to show you, I put five nails in every connection point where the girder hit the post. Uh, this is the door header, but everywhere the girder meets a post, there's uh, five nails. I just put them in this pattern everywhere it attaches. It should be really strong. Since I'm putting the uh, Putting everything together before I do the concrete, I had to build something up for the level of the concrete for when I put the doors on. So this this board right here, it's the level of the concrete and it's removable. It's just sitting on these uh, ledger boards that are nailed in uh, to make the top of this this board is uh, the exact height of the concrete. And then uh, put the garage doors on. Um, you know, I got this two by four. I stuck on the pole to bring it out to the same level as the header, and then uh, attach the the door track to that. But I got openers for them. I don't have them on yet. As first time I ever put doors on, it turned out pretty good. I was also kind of worried because. When I bought the doors, you know, I bought this uh, 12 foot wide door and I made the opening for the, the framing was exactly 12 foot wide. And the door actually, without that, that white rubber trim, the door will actually fit through the opening. So I was kind of worried, but uh, once I put this trim on, you know, that's the, the guide of the door. So when you shut it, it's up against that trim. It's not it's not behind the wood, and I, I'm pretty quite certain that's the way it should be on both ends. You know, it's the, the door is just guided on that rubber trim, so it moves freely and good. It's not over the wood. The door doesn't cover the wood at all. It's just covering the, the trim. And even on top, the very top piece, when it was shut all the way, it's just down on the strip. It's not over the wood at all. So the opening for this door, the rough opening is exactly 12 wide and exactly 10 foot tall. And the door itself is exactly 12 foot wide and 10 foot tall. So it fits right up against the rubber garage door trim that you put up on the outside. So you can kind of see right there. So when you shut the door, um, that strip is just just covering the outside edge of the door. It covers that metal metal frame. So you make your opening for the garage door exactly the frame, the size of the garage door and then the trim finishes it out nicely. <clears throat> yep, I saved money. I didn't buy windows for two of the doors. Um, my thought was, you know, this side is more homey and this side is more storage. I saved 400 bucks. I didn't put windows in these two big doors. Um, but actually, I kind of like it like that for the reason is because as in the evening You know, this is facing west the sun Blares in and heats up the barn But where there's no windows it does not so I kind of like the fact that There's not Sun shining in heating up the barn Had to support the the garage door track so since I put in the LEDs lighting on the edge of the truss, I couldn't cover that up. So I ran these two by fours up to the top of the, of the truss and come down and just put a two by four on the bottom of those to have something to support the back of the garage door track. Most of the rip, most of the cuts I made, I use this, uh, I use this steel cutting uh, carbide tipped blade. 
So I put this on the uh, put this on the battery powered uh, Master Force I got from Menards. Pretty cheap, but this does a really good job. Uh, so this jig I built. It's got the angle cutter right here. So this is the 412 pitch, and then I got a straight cut on the end here. Same deal, just a two by four to guide it. And all I do is measure, measure the one size I need, you know, whether it's the longer or the, the longer or the shorter edge, and then I put it in there, match that up, and then I've been cutting it with this and sticking it on the wall. So I measured this one, this needs to be, this is the part that overlaps the piece that's going up there. Let's see when we get around here to put it on, but this needs to be 73 and a half. Uh, the, the rest of it I'm gonna have to use underneath the porch. Uh, we'll see when we get around there. But, so I gotta cut this one upside down because this needs to be the longer, the longer edge. So I'm gonna have to do a straight cut on this one too because so right now I'm not measuring it. I'm just gonna cut the angle and then measure down from the tallest point and cut it at 73 and a half straight. But if this, if this was the piece that was going on that wasn't above the porch, I would measure from the bottom of it up 73 and a half inches, line that up right here and then cut that and they've been fitting every time. Protect your ears and protect your eyes because this is loud and it throws metal shavings everywhere. There's the perfect roof edge cut. All right, so this is 73 and a half right here. I just measured on that one rib, because that's the tallest rib at the peak of this piece. So rip this straight across and it should fit right on the building. All right, let's go put this piece on. I am putting the uh, closure strip on the bottom of these pieces. Uh, they come down 
and they have an opening at the bottom. So I've seen some people put J channel on there, but I'm just gonna put a closure strip on it right where it meets the, the top of the porch roof. Now I just got to measure the next piece, this length right here, from here to the bottom of this metal, and then cut it in that jig, with this being the tall, the tall edge of the angle, and then it should fit right up here, and uh, line up with the bottom of this one. Obviously, I got to go back and mark where I'm going to put the screws, and uh, put the rest of the screws in, but you get the idea. Um, that way you're not trying to find the angle every time. I've put the siding on really quick with that jig. So, and at the very top, you can see it, it lined up pretty good. All right, we've got the rest of the side metal on above the porch. That finishes up all the, I'm sorry, end metal. That finishes all the ends at the top. So I just gotta, this is the last section of siding I need to put on. But like I said, I've seen some barns where they have J channel on the bottom of the siding where you have a, a, a roof coming out from the side. But honestly, I didn't want to have anything to be able to catch de uh, debris and stuff. So I chose to leave the bottom of the metal open like that. But I got the rubber closure strip underneath that right, right at the very bottom edge. I've got a closure strip right in the bottom of that so screwed very close to the bottom so it's nice and tight on the roof it's straight yeah you'll see that edge but at least i don't have to worry about debris and junk sitting inside that j channel water should just flow right onto the porch roof and run off so that's this end turned out really good got some more fascia to put on than the rest of the fascia on the on the gable end as well so it turned out real good so far. I think I forgot to say when I'm putting these screws on, the you know behind it is the uh, that real soft foam board, so the metal compresses real easy against that, and it'll it'll dent in. So I'm, when I'm tightening the metal down, I'm just touching the washer onto the metal. You know, I'm making sure the washer doesn't spin, but I am not I'm not crushing. The metal i'm not crushing the screw into the metal I'm just barely once it starts to click basically once it starts to torque and touch the metal i stop and uh we've had some pretty good rains and i haven't seen any water on the inside or coming out underneath the metal and uh focus real hard i'm putting the screws on straight too we put all the softening on I still need to trim the uh, end, the piece on the end there, but on the softening on the end, uh, kind of debated on whether to box box it in and make you know this level come all the way to the end. But I decided to do it like this. This is how the uh, Menards 
little sample building showed how to do it um, basically the F and J for the metal goes all the way to the end and then I put a little filler board in behind that piece and then that's just a four L4 flashing on the very end of this soffiting to finish out the end. I like the way this looks actually. The way I put the soffit on, I uh, just use a construction screw on every in every uh, valley of the soffit. And then, uh, you know, I had to cut those. I use that jig to cut these as well because they come in like 12 foot lengths. You got to cut the 18 inches or whatever your overhang is. And then the, the vented, you know, every panel, the two middle pieces are vented and the outside two are not. So it looks like every other's vented once you put it up. And then I shoved the fascia up underneath the drip edge and uh, finished out the fascia board. I bent a couple pieces up. I gotta go get two more pieces. Alright, just a quick update on where I'm at. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Talk to you later.